The town of Hereford in the Texas Panhandle lays claim as the beef capital of the world. According to livestock industry sources, at any given time, there are between 1.3 and 1.5 million head of cattle on feed in feedlots within a 50-mile radius of Hereford. But now the town is also home to the first ethanol plant in the state of Texas. The impact that they've made to the economy, they have probably about $140 million plus dollar investment. The Hereford Economic Development Corporation cites several reasons for enticing the ethanol industry to locate here. We are a very agriculture friendly community. We see that that's where our limelight and glory is, is taking the agriculture industry and diversifying. Uh, one of the big reasons you bring the corn in in here and you've got the hungry mouths to feed both in the feed yard cattle as well as in the dairies here and they have a very easy access for their wet distillers grain products going out. This is White Energy Ethanol Plant. It is a 110 million gallon facility that turns 100,000 bushels of grain per day into 100 percent ethanol. Grain is shipped in by rail from Illinois and Iowa because this is a grain deficit region. Construction of the 100,000 square foot white energy plant on 80 acres, which is the largest ethanol plant currently offered for construction, took 18 months. Nearly 400 workers pumped millions of dollars into the local economy during this phase. The contractors, 90% uh, of the people that actually physically built the plant, uh, were from other locations than, than Hereford, Texas. So uh, we stayed and lived in the community, such as I did. And so these labor dollars that, to build one of these plants are in the neighborhood of 12, even higher, millions of dollars. So why these people are here over the same period of time it took to build the plant, the 18 months, we spend those labor dollars in a community such as Hereford. Agri-Energy Solutions of Lubbock was instrumental in bringing Hereford community leaders and Dallas white energy officials together to build the plant. White Energy has been in operation in Hereford since January 15th of this year in what is called a destination plant. You can build a plant in the middle of a cornfield, uh, like we see those the highest concentration of ethanol plants are in the corn belt. Or you can look at destination areas, an area where you uh, um, immediately manufacture the ethanol and you market it into the, uh, uh, into the community. Or you look at one of the principal co-products, which is the distiller's grains, which is a high quality feed product. It actually is a great savings to the livestock producers in this area. Um, when they're faced with um, extremely high corn prices, we offer a, an affordable solution to them. Often times our pricing of our product is an average of about 85% that of the price of corn. So they're getting a high energy feed for a reduced price. Area dairies and feedlots are markets for the wet distiller's grain from White Energy. They haven't approached me yet to sell me the product. Would we use it? Yeah, we'll, we will use it if it fits in our ration. Uh, if it's economical. A second ethanol plant, Panda Ethanol, is now under construction in Hereford. Its projected opening in late 2008 will add another $160 million investment into the community as it burns manure from area feed yards and possibly dairies to generate steam for the facility. But there are concerns in the livestock industry surrounding the historically high prices being paid for corn by feed yard operators and cattle producers. Some say that while farmers are reaping the benefits of higher corn prices due to increased demand, the price being paid in the livestock sector to feed cattle is too high, mainly due to the ethanol industry. Paco Feedlot in Friona is one of dozens of feed yards in the Texas Panhandle, which is paying high corn prices to feed the 22,000 cattle in the yard. The ethanol business has made uh, competition for grain a lot stiffer. It's increased the price of grain greatly. The cattle that were bought in the fall, were, it was a high price for feeder cattle, and, and we paid it just like everybody else paid it, but we were not expecting the grain price to go like it did. Those cattle, the cattle that are coming out now are losing between $100 to $200 a head because we fed them $20 higher cost of gain than we thought we was going to. And it, it sure makes a difference on the profitability of them. Rancher Floyd Reeve is one of the stockholders in the Paco feed yard. He has his cattle placed here and agrees that feeding corn to livestock is expensive because of the demand for corn and ethanol expensive enough to possibly alter his management techniques. Well, I'll, I'll try to buy the, the cattle cheaper. And if I can't, I'll just skip the cattle for a year and farm.
Back in Hereford, a freight train travels through or stops in town every 18 to 22 minutes, greatly contributing to the vital transportation of agricultural products from the many crossroads of this region to other areas of Texas and the nation. We are the spoke in the wheel. We have approximately 110 trains that go through Hereford, Texas on a daily basis. Um, we have three facilities that are able to accommodate the 110 car shuttle trains that bring corn and or other commodities in and out of this area. Uh, it's just phenomenal. Many of those trains stop at White Energy's ethanol plant to haul thousands of gallons per day of the raw product to various destinations. We've got uh, three principal markets. One is California. Uh, the secondary markets are, of course, Dallas and Houston, and those are continuing to grow, so we've got great opportunities there as well. With gasoline prices at record levels, more emphasis is being placed on consumers buying cleaner burning fuels such as ethanol blends. The opportunity for us is to be a partner with the gasoline business and to reduce that de dependence on that foreign oil. That's very important. As we look at the different fuels that we have in the future, we, we have the opportunities for E85s, which are 85 percent ethanol. As the opportunities grow right now for the uh, uh, ethanol we have in the United States, it's primarily as a 10 percent plan. Current nationwide production stands at 8.3 billion gallons of ethanol at 145 plants across the country. Projected production of 9 billion gallons by the end of 2008 will go a long way toward the goal of the Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007, which calls for 36 billion gallons of ethanol to be blended into America's gasoline market by 2022 with 21 billion of the 36 billion gallons coming from sources other than corn. For Voices of Agriculture, I'm Tom Nicoletti in Hereford.